Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, find missing and repeated values. So the idea is that we're given a square grid. It's an N by N grid. So it might look something like this. I guess I'll take the first simple example in this case where the grid has one, three, two, and two. So the range of values in this grid are going to be limited to one through n squared. So in this case, n is two, as you can see, like those are the dimensions of this uh, grid. So in this case, we're gonna have values from one through four. Every single value from one through four is gonna show up in this input, except for one of them. Let's call that the missing number. There's one number that's missing. Now, if we have n squared elements in here, they're all limited to this range. One of them is missing. That must mean that some of them must show up multiple times. And in this case, there's only gonna be a single element that shows up exactly twice. So the fact that it shows up twice basically means it makes up for the missing element. Let's call this element the double element, the fact that it shows up twice. I don't know if double is like a good word for that though, given that double can mean different things in programming, but I'm just gonna stick with it. So all we wanna do is identify what these two numbers are and return them in the form of an array. They tell us to return it in the form of A, B, where A is the number that shows up twice and B is the number that doesn't show up. But I feel like calling it double and missing is a bit more descriptive. But anyways, that's what we're trying to do in this problem. That's the whole problem. This is Elite Code Easy. The solution to this problem, to solve it efficiently at least, is just gonna require us to traverse over the input array a single time. For us to be able to identify which element shows up twice, we can use something called a hash map to keep track of the count of each element. So for each number, we're gonna map it to the count of that number then it should be easy for us to know which number shows up two times. And even beyond that, it should also be pretty easy for us to identify which number is missing because whichever number has a count of zero or whichever number, I guess you could say, doesn't even exist in the hash map in the first place, that's the number that's missing. So if we can just count the occurrences of every element in this grid, we should be able to solve this problem efficiently. We should be able to solve it in linear time. Well, I guess n in this case is just one of the dimensions. So I guess you could say n squared and uh, n squared space as well. Each element is gonna be stored in the hash map potentially. So that's the whole idea behind this problem. Let me code it up now. So I get the dimension of the grid, I call that n, and then we want to iterate. So I'm gonna say for i in range n and for j in range n, we just wanna iterate over the grid. I'm gonna have my hash map and I'm lazy, so I'm gonna take advantage of Python, the fact that it has a default dictionary. This will by default initialize any value that isn't already inserted in the hash map to have a count of zero. If you wanna learn all those like tips and tricks in Python, I like to cover them. I try to cover them pretty in depth in this Python for Coding Interviews course. If you're new to Python, you could also check out the beginner's course, but each of these courses has like a bunch of interactive lessons. So uh, for example, like if you wanna learn about default dictionaries, there is a comprehensive lesson on those. You'll write some code to actually test your knowledge. But uh, back to the solution here for each of these numbers. So I'm gonna get the number in the grid at these coordinates at index i, index j. And then for the count of that number, I'm gonna do this, uh, increment it by one. Using a default dictionary makes this pretty easy. Even if this isn't already inserted in the hash wrap, we can still do this without getting a key doesn't exist error. After that is done, we want to identify which number was the double and which number was the missing. We'll initially set these to zero and then we'll return this array, double and missing. Now to identify them, we can just do this. For every number in a range from one to n squared, we can do that like this, n times n plus one. In Python, this is not inclusive. We will stop at n squared. That is covered in the Python for Beginners course, if you're interested. Um, but 
Then we just want to identify which one had a count of zero. So which number has a count of zero? Um, if we see one, then we will assign that to be the missing number. And if a number has a count of two, we will say that's the double number. So that's pretty much the whole solution. I know I went kind of fast. Uh, let's quickly run this. So you can see it works. It's pretty efficient. If you wanted to do this without a default dictionary, depending on like which language you're using, you can do that. So I will do this, just use like a basic hash map. And then here we can say if grid of i j this number is not in count then we can say count of that number can be set to zero and then we can increment it so we will still have like the accurate count and then down here instead of checking like if it was zero we could just check if a num is not in count then we get the missing else if it does exist in count and the count is equal to two, then we found the double. We'll never find the double and the missing number on the same iteration of the loop. So it's fine to have an if and else if. So this will also work and this might be easier to translate into a different language. So yeah, you can see after running it, it does work. It's pretty efficient. Now, yes, there actually is a math solution to this problem. I was thinking if there was one, I couldn't think of it myself. And then when I looked at the solution, I figured out why I wasn't able to come up with it by myself. It requires knowing two very specific math formulas. This first one is actually very simple. This is just Gauss's formula. But this second one requires a bit more in-depth knowledge of like algebra, I think, and some other things. And so I just didn't know this one. And I mean, I could go through this solution. I could kind of explain everything that's going on. Once you have these two formulas, it's mostly just an algebra problem at that point. I don't think it's too difficult, but again, it's just an algebra problem. I don't think you're gonna be asked this in your coding interview. I find this stuff very interesting, but at the same time, I'm trying to resist the urge uh, from going down like a really long rabbit hole because I do have some other things to work on and maybe you do as well. So if you do have other higher priority things to work on, if you're just preparing for coding interviews, I really don't think that this is a good use of your time. If you find it interesting, then definitely go ahead and like learn it, use ChatGPT to try to understand it. But I probably am not going to. Thanks for watching. Check out Neatcode.io for a lot more and I'll see you pretty soon.